Hey guys, and welcome back to another A-Level Maths revision video. And in this video today, we're going to take a look at some second year material for stats, and we're taking a look at hypothesis tests for the mean of a normal distribution. So it's a pretty short video. There's actually two questions, um, and I've written these questions myself. There might be the odd spelling mistake or something like that, but shouldn't matter too much, um, and hopefully you still find this useful. So let's take a look at the questions. And the reason there's only two questions here is because I've just took a look at an example for each type. So a one-tailed test and then a two-tailed test. So question one here, we won't mention the type of test just yet. Let's just work through the question step by step. So we're told the weight of chocolate biscuits in a tin can be shown to follow a normal distribution with mean 474 grams and a standard deviation of 4.2 grams. So for part A, we're asked to find the probability that a randomly selected tin has a weight of less than 468 grams. So here for part A, what we need to do first is just define the distribution that we're told at the very beginning of the question. So that's in this paragraph here, or this opening couple of lines. So question one, part A. So our distribution here, it's up to you what variable you use. I normally always just use x, but obviously w might be better here for the weight. But I'm going to say x is a normal distribution with mean 474 and standard deviation or variance here of 4.2 squared. Okay, so that's our distribution. And then we're asked to find the probability that's a randomly selected tin has a weight of less than 468. So that's the probability that x, our distribution here, is less than 468. Okay. And here, this is just one of those questions where you just need to put this into your calculator. So obviously, this isn't connected too much to hypothesis testing, um, or it's not directly a hypothesis testing question. It's more just a warm up and making sure you are confident what kind of the probability is. So here, just use your graphical calculator um, or your calculator that has the capabilities to do this. Because we're looking for the probability of being less than 468, that means we put 468 as the upper value. If the lower would just be a really small number, um, I just put something like minus 999, for example, like that. Um, the mean will clearly be this value here, so that's mu. And then your standard deviation will be the square root of 4.2 squared, so it'll just be 4.2 there. Okay, so that's the variance. And if you input this correctly into your calculator, what you should find is you get 0 0.0766 there. Okay, so 0 0.0766. Okay, so that's pi A. For part B then, we're asked to find the probability that a randomly selected tin has a weight of exactly 470 grams. And for part B, you don't actually even need a calculator. Okay, And the reason for this is because here, this is an exact probability. We're looking for exactly 470 grams. But remember the type of distribution that the normal distribution is. The normal distribution is a continuous distribution. So in that case, we can work out exact probabilities like this. Okay, so in that case, the probability of x being exactly 470 will just simply be 0. Okay, and that's true for any value that was 500, 300, uh, 474. It will always just be 0 in the case of a normal distribution. So that's part B. And then for part C, let's take a look at our hypothesis test now. So we're told a company suspects that the mean weight of the tins being produced from the machine is lower than it should be. A sample of 21 tins are taken and the mean weight is found to be 472 grams. Writing down the company's null and alternate hypotheses, carry out a test at the 1% significance level to see if there is evidence to suggest that the mean is producing tins with a mean weight lower than 474 grams. So quite a lot going on. Um, let's just break it down step by step. So with a hypothesis test, we always want to start with the hypotheses. So that's our H0 and our H1. Okay. And because we're testing here against the mean of a normal distribution, that means we use the parameter of mu. Okay, that represents the mean, so mu and mu again. Now we need to decide here whether this is a one-tailed hypothesis test or a two-tailed. And the way to tell is just to read the context of the question, what we're actually testing for. So in this case, if we read right at the very end down here, it says we're testing to see if there is evidence to suggest that the machine is producing tins with a mean weight lower. So that's the key word there, lower. That tells us that we're going to be testing that this is lower than 474. And for your h naught here, mu is always equal to this value. So it's just equal to 474. Okay. So that's our hypotheses. 
Now, with the hypothesis test like this, what we always do is assume H0 is true. And from here, we write down our distribution here for the mean. So X bar will also be normally distributed. The mean here is the same as what we're testing for, so 474. But we have to be careful with the variance here. We need the standard error. So that's going to be our variance here, 4.2 squared. So 4.2 squared. But we divide this by the sample size. So because we take a sample of 21 tins, that means we divide this by 21. So that will be our variance. So remember, when you do input this into your calculator, when you work out the probability layer, you need to take the square root of this full expression. Okay. So now all we need to do is calculate a probability, and then we compare that to our significance level. So we're testing here for the probability that x bar is less. Well, actually, let's just decide here. How do we know which way this inequality goes? Well, for a one-tailed test, it's really easy. All you do is you check um, your h1. So if it's less than here, then we're testing this as less than as well. If this was greater than, then this probability here would be greater than. <coughs> okay, so that's how you tell for a one-tailed test. But we need to know what this value here is. Well, we just compare that to the evidence. That 472 here, okay? 472 grams, that's what it was found to be. So we're testing the probability that the mean here is less than 472. <clears throat> so what we do now is we input into our calculator here. This distribution, so make sure your mu is 474. Your standard deviation is the square root of 4.2 squared divided by 21. <clears throat> this is less than 472. So in that case, we put 472 as the upper value, and then we put a very small uh, value in for the lower. And then all we need to do is actually enter that and get our probability. So in that case, what we get here is, if you do this correctly, 0.0145. Okay, so quite a small value. So now, just give me a minute. Absolutely fine. So all I do now is I compare this to my uh, significance level. So what we got for our significance level here was 1%. That's what we're told in the question. So we're comparing this value here to 0.01. So is this bigger or smaller than 0.01? Well, clearly this is larger. Okay, 0.0145 is larger than 0.01. So therefore, we have to decide whether we accept or reject. So when it's larger like this, we accept H0. My cat's meowing. So we accept H0, and we say there's insufficient evidence. Insufficient evidence to suggest that the mean weight is lower. Okay, so I'm going to run out, but insufficient evidence to suggest. Okay, so that's the solution there for passing. So that's our hypothesis test. So like you can see, they are pretty straightforward. You define your hypotheses. You define the distribution here if we assume H0 is true. This is for the means. Um, and then we find our probability. Okay, comparing that to our significance level, we decide whether we accept if it's larger or we reject if this value here is smaller than the significance level. Okay, so that's the solution there to question one. And let's take a look now at the final question here. Question five. So the length, the length of a coach trip from Manchester to Kent is normally distributed with a mean of 280 minutes and a standard deviation of seven minutes. So part A, we just asked to find the probability that the trip takes longer than 292 minutes. So for part A here, again, all we need to do is define the distribution to start with. Again, it doesn't matter what, what letter you use here, what variable. I'm just going to use x. So x is normally distributed with mean 280. And our variance here will be 7 squared. So for the probability that the trip takes longer than 292 minutes, that's the probability that x is larger <coughs> than 292. So here now, all I'm going to do, again, just like we've done with the previous question and the pro and the normal distribution probability question, just input this into our calculator. So my lower here now, because this is greater than 292, so my lower will be 292. My upper will be quite a large number, 9999, for example. And then our mean will be 280, and our standard deviation will be the square root of 7 squared, so just clearly just 7. 
and if you input this correctly, what you should get here is 0 0.0432. Okay, so that's part A done. Let's move on to part B now, which is where we're going to look at the hypothesis test. So for part B here, we're told the manager of the coach company suspects the mean time for the trip from Manchester to Kent has changed. They take a sample of 15 coach journeys and find a mean time of 285 minutes. So we're asked to carry out a hypothesis test at the, it says 5%, I'm gonna change that actually uh, to be 10%, just for the video, just so we can see um, something different at the very end. Okay, so we'll change that to 10% for now. And we're gonna test the manager's claim regarding the mean time. So here, what we always start with, like we said previously, is our hypotheses. So we've got H0 and we have H1. Now for H0, again, we always start with the parameter here of mu, because we're representing the mean, and this will always be equal to, and for H1, this is dependent on whether it's a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test. And again, we need to decide based on the question. Now, the manager's claim here is told at this part here. So if we take a look at this little line here. So the manager of the coach company suspects the mean time for the trip from Manchester to Kent has changed. So that's the key bit at the very end. It's just simply changed. So it's not stating specifically whether it's greater than uh, or whether it's less than, it's just there's a change. So in that case, if it doesn't specify uh, specifically whether it's greater than or less than, then that's a two-tailed test and our we use not equal to in that case, okay? And our value here, again, that would just simply be the 280, okay? Like we originally did for question one in this video, it would just be the mean of this distribution. So that's gonna be 280 and 280 again, okay? So now what we need to do here is assume H0 is true, and then we define our new distribution for the mean. So X bar will again be normally distributed. Our mean will also be 280. And our variance here, well, we take the standard error. So that will be the seven squared. So we take seven squared. But remember, we divide this by the sample size, and that's a sample of 15 coach journeys. So we divide that by 15. So now we need to find our probability. But with a two-tailed test, it's a little bit more complicated. And what I'd do here is recommend drawing a sketch of the bell curve, okay? Just so you can see what this probability will look like. So what we do here is we look at the evidence that's been found. So they took a sample of 15 coach journeys and found a mean time of 285 minutes. So this middle value here, um, I should not really draw underneath, let me just erase that. So this part here underneath, so if I just redraw it, uh, wrong pen colour, we'll get there eventually. So we try again. So this middle value here, this is the mean of the distribution. So that's going to be 280. Okay, so that's 280. So our evidence is 285. So we're looking for the probability of uh, X bar being either greater than or less than uh, the mean, or sorry, the evidence. So 285. So how do we decide whether it's greater than or less than? Well, we take a look at the bell curve. Again, my graph is not very good, but just so we can see what's going on. And we take a look at the 285. So the 285 will be, say, somewhere up here. Okay, so that's my 285. Now, because this is greater than um, 280, we're above the mean. If I was to take a look at being below this 285, this value would clearly be greater than 0 0.5. Okay. Remember, this is symmetrical about the mean. So in that case, what I want is this value here to the right. Okay, that will clearly be less than 0 0.5. So what I'm looking for here is the probability that x bar is greater than 285, okay? If it was below the mean here, if it was on this side, then we would be less than, okay? So that's how you tell which way the inequality will face. And all we need to do now is input this into our calculator. Remember, we square root this to get the standard deviation. And what you should get here for this probability, if you input this correctly onto your calculator, is 0 0.06 to nine, okay? And now we need to compare this to our significance level. So we're comparing this 0 0.0629 to 10%, okay? So we're comparing this to 0 0.1. 
And this value here, 0 0.0629, is clearly smaller than 0 0.1. So therefore, because this is smaller now, we reject H0. Okay, so that's why I've changed it to 10% for the sake of this video. Just so you can see an example where we reject H0. And when we reject H0, we say there is evidence. So there is evidence. At the ten percent significance level. Uh, again, I'm probably going to run out of room here, but we're saying there is evidence at the ten percent significance level. Um, you know, to say the manager's claim is true. Okay, um, you know that there has been a change. It's not equal to two hundred a year. Okay, so that's why you'd say that just to give that a quick summary. But we do always want to put a quick summary after we accept H not or reject H not. Okay. But either way, that's our solution there to part B and our solution to the full question. So that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, hopefully this has helped. Um, I feel like there's quite a few errors in this video. Uh, not my best one, but hopefully you find this helpful. Like always, any issues, just leave a comment down below. Cheers.